माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर सोनाली पंकज सोनी आई एम एम डी रेडियोलॉजी फ्रॉम जी एम सी नागपुर आई एम नाउ सेटल्ड इन अमृतसर एंड रनिंग सेंटर बाय नेम नव्या डायग्नोस्टिक सेंटर आई एम अ डायरेक्टर एंड चीफ कंसल्टेंट देयर माय एरिया ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज फिटल मेडिसिन फीमेल इनफर्टिलिटी एंड अल्ट्रासाउंड आई एम ऑल्सो स्पेशलाइज इन ट्रॉमा इमेजिंग and i have been consistently working on hysterosalpingography and uh, fluoroscopic fallopian tube recanalization for proximal tubal obstruction since 2000 and uh, i have done a, a number of cases uh, of conventional hysterosalpingography as well as sonosalpingography and i hope you people will like this video on hysterosalpingography and various other modalities for checking tubal pregnancy thank you now you all know the incidence of tubal infertility it is around 10 to 15% of the couples they are seen to be sub fertile the main causes of infertility in women include an ovulation and the tubal factors they contribute to about 30 to 40% of all the female factors then there are other factors such as peritoneal cervical and idiopathic now tubal pathologies we already discussed contribute to 30 to 40% this is due to increasing trend of pid ectopic pregnancies use of intrauterine contraceptive devices endometriosis previous pelvic surgeries and salpingitis now are fallopian tubes merely a pipe no they are a patent tube and they have a dynamic function of transporting ovum and that is why when we consider a fallopian tube we have to consider it as a dynamic organ now it is not sufficient to know just that fallopian tubes are patent we need to know their function it is very important to know the motility the condition of tubal lumen the condition of the fimbria the tubo ovarian relationship how the ovary is being skirted by the tubes now in hsg we are just testing only the patency of the fallopian tube it is not a test to assess the function this should be very clear now what are the various tests for tubal patency the gold standard is hysterolaparoscopy other tubal tests are hysterosalpingography the hsg hysterosonogram the selective hysterosalpingogram the magnetic resonance hsg saline or contrast sonohysterogram hysterosalpingo contrast sonography 3d and 4d contrast usg and the traditional rubin's test so the american college of radiology has uh, recommended following indications and contraindication for hsg to be conducted now what are the indications obviously infertility then follow up of any sterilization procedure any pelvic pain irregular menstrual cycles irregular vaginal bleeding congenital abnormalities prior or after tubal surgery prior to assisted reproductive interventions uterine fibroids thickened or irregular endometrium and a sequelae to ectopic pregnancy now what are the contraindication there are very few we should be very sure that the patient is not pregnant in case you are not very sure get a pregnancy test done prior to the procedure any ongoing pelvic infection if the patient has excessive discharge or bleeding pv this should not be done any history of allergy to the contrast media this should be avoided now hysterosalpingography had been widely used for assessment of tubal patency it opacifies both the endometrial cavity as well as the fallopian tubes and as well as it shows the spill of the patent tube it is an advantage to study simultaneously the cavity as well as the tubes and we can very well assess the mullerian abnormalities and endometrial lesions with the help of this procedure now advantage of this procedure it's an outpatient procedure it is relatively inexpensive it does not require any general anesthesia and is associated with therapeutic effect what does that mean sometimes the patient comes to me with the history of primary infertility we just do an hsg and it's itself acts as a therapy because it flushes all the mucus plugs and uh, maybe causing hindrance to the tubal function and patient conceives within one or two cycles Uh, why it is important to to report a correct interpretation because spilling of the dye does not always mean that we are dealing with normal tubes it takes an experienced expert to correctly interpret whether the tubal anatomy is normal on hsg or not indeed interpretation of hsg films is the most frequently falsely interpreted test in medicine we constantly see patients with diagnosis of normal tubes on hsg who when we closely examine their x-ray films turn out to have obvious tubal disease we should focus on the patency of tube when we perform and interpret hsg very minutely 
for fertility specialist the fundamental question is only that whether the tubes are open or not but one thing is very clear normal tubes of course have to be open and open tubes however are not necessarily always normal so what is the patient preparation it is done in the first half of menstrual cycle in the proliferative phase between 8th to 12th day patient is asked to avoid any unprotected intercourse from the date of her period until the investigation in order to avoid the possible risk of pregnancy if periods are regular do urine beta hcg test to rule out pregnancy exclude active pelvic infection and prophylactic antibiotics these are not routinely given but they can be given in patients of bacterial endocarditis so what is the procedure take an informed consent give pre medication in the form of antispasmodic injection bascopan and injection atropine to elevate any vasovagal syncope or attack patient is asked to empty bladder immediately prior to the procedure a plain radiograph of pelvis is taken for any evidence of any calcification iucds or tubectomy rings patient is placed in lithotomy position the perineum is prepared draped speculum is inserted followed by holding of cervix with tenaculum dilatation of cervix by sound followed by cannulation of cervix with hg cannula of your choice mostly i am using leech wilkinson's cannula and or a single balloon hg cannula which is nowadays very much in use now cannula should be free of air this is a very important tip because it helps to eliminate any bubble artifacts in the uterus after injection after cannulation we remove the speculum position the patient and catheter or the area of fluoroscopy and adjust our factors we talk to her regarding any discomfort explain about the pushing of injection and then inject initially we inject only 3 to 5 ml we take the spot film one which uh, generally depicts the uterus size shape and endometrial cavity it is followed by gradual injection of another 5 cc to delineate the fallopian tubes another 3 to 5 ml if you don't see the spillage in previous films or on the fluoroscopy monitor is given so in all we are taking 3 to 4 spot films sometimes some oblique views are also taken when uh, there is gross antiversion or retroversion and at the end patient is advised to take antibiotics and she is guided about some vaginal spotting for the coming days so what are the complication pain because of the dilatation of uterus spillage into peritoneum infection pelvic infection sometimes may occur due to improper aseptic precautions and bleeding vascular or lymphatic intravasation vasovagal syncope this is very common that is why i stress the importance of pre medication there comes the role of atropine pregnancy irradiation so uh, there is lot of ongoing theories about how much is the irradiation received by the ovaries it is only 1 millisievert my friends and this is very negligible when it comes to uh, reproduction it is equivalent to 10 chest x rays allergic reaction to iodinated contrast media this is also very commonly seen you should be ready with the emergency tray to in order to tackle any emergency situation a uterine perforation if it is in the hands of any inexperienced radiologist or a gynecologist now what are the contrast media we are using the water soluble uh, non ionic contrast media in the form of omnifac or iohexol we can very clearly see the tubal anatomy it gets absorbed within hours and does not leave residue there is no granulum form formation very rarely it occurs pain sometimes persist with this contrast and there is prompt demonstration of tubal patency delayed film not needed so these are the hg cannulas these are the metallic and this is the balloon catheter this has got a side arm for injection of the balloon now instrumentation this is the uh, trolley settings we need the speculum tenaculum sounds and the hg cannulas now balloon catheter versus metal catheter less fluoroscopic time in balloon catheter small amount of contrast less pain it is easier for the physician to use it provides a good seal at the cervix so lesser use of contrast and it's mostly expensive because it is disposable single time use and hence a balloon catheter obviously is superior to a metallic cannula so these are the spot films first of all we take only 3 3 ml of contrast and we see the uterine cavity this is followed by another injection of 5 cc you can very well see the fallopian tubes and then the another two films for the spillage and the pattern of the spillage so what reporting format should include the name age date and time the last menstrual period of the patient informed consent 
and the pre-op medications shape and size of the endometrial cavity should be mentioned the shape of the uterus whether it is arcuate subsepted septed bicornuate if you are very sure otherwise you can just mention the findings and unicornuate or t-shaped regular irregular margins any cyanicky air bubbles filling defects tubal course outline any blocks type of spill focal peritoneal free any peritubal adhesions any strictures hydrosulfings any other findings related to adhesions cervix polyps and calcification now most common artifact we can see is the air bubble artifact this is the air bubble now how does it differs from any other filling defect it will subsequently disappear in the subsequent films after injection of further contrast now cervical ferning pattern the cervical pattern looks like that now histosulfungography of septate uterus can again demonstrate a variety of uh, sur uterine sur uh, cervical septation including complete septation or septation at the level of internal loss or including septation till the two separate cervical canals now bicornuate uterus with various degrees of duplication of cervix in different patient it might include two symmetric uterine cavities with communication at the isthmus there the intercornual angle is 105 that is more than 100 that is the criteria single cervix and vagina are present intervening cleft sometimes extends to the endocervical canal also at up till the level of os now this is the eshre and esg classification you all very well you are all very well versed with that but one point i would like to stress ki hsg cannot differentiate this now the various types of mullerian abnormalities definitely the diagnosis is by mri only few of the points are there to for differentiating bicornuate septate such as uh, in bicornuate we get fundus indentation the angle between the cavities is wide more than 100 and there is partial fusion of mullerian duct in septate the external surface is always normal there is no indentation the cavities are much closer there is defect in canalization or resorption of the midline septum but a definite diagnosis is only by mri now few of the abnormalities i would like to point these are the hydrosulfing these are the dilated tubal structures which appear like sometimes like balloon and these are obstructed hydrosulfing they lead to, for these may further lead to pyosulfing and chances of increased ectopic pregnancies tubal ligation this is very commonly seen we get a large amount of patients in indian settings after tubal ligation and uh, generally tube is seen till the isthmic part there is a tubal ligation at the junction of proximal 1/3 and distal 2/3 2 2 2 in the isthmic part we can very well see the tubes till the isthmic part cyanicky now these are your definite uterine defects which can be of any shape and size and they are causing filling defects in the endometrial cavity these can be single multiple or they can even give a distorted appearance to the entire cavity cornual spasm now this is very important entity because whenever you are doing a good hsg you don't need this type of film this type of film ind indicates that there was no proper pre medication given patient must have been in pain followed by a cornual spasm leading to pseudo blockage at the level of cornu this is known as a nipple sign proper medication we can reduce this cornual spasms with the help of injection anti spasmodic such as bascopan now tuberculosis in indian setting is very common we get variety of tubal patterns in case of involvement by tuberculosis such as pipe like appearance stretched out tube tube instead of going down in the pelvis is stretched up due to peritubal adhesion now there are multiple strictures here there is balloon like dilatation tubal obstruction multiple strictures sometimes there are peritubal adhesions and cotton wool appearance now the one uterus that had been talked about very much in the previous text is the t shaped configuration in patient who had received the diethyl stilbosterol therapy these are nowadays not commonly seen instead we are getting these t shaped configurations small shaped uh, uterus in patient with fulminant genito urinary reproductive system cox i have seen such type of uterus with cox we no more see such type of uterus associated with any drug medication now disadvantage which is very important the iodinated contrast reactions are already discussed this can cause any amount of reaction right to anaphylaxis and you should be all uh, ready for that 
Nowadays, with replacement by non-ionic water-soluble contrast media, we are getting very fewer reactions. Then exposure to radiation, as already told, it is less than one millisievert, and majority of the radiation is actually distributed. It is sometimes painful, no doubt, and we can very well alleviate the symptoms of the patient by giving proper sedation. Sometimes some patients can be offered short G if they are highly apprehensive about the procedure. So a proper counseling session should be there. prior to the procedure with the referring physician also the radiologist should have a small uh, chat regarding how is the type of patient and whether she will uh, cooperate for sedation or she will need a short g and we need a good radiological setup sometimes you need a good image intensifier or even a small extra instrument table can also give good results